Warning, All Things Crime is a true crime production that may contain violent or disturbing material. Viewer or listener discretion is advised. I figured after voting for Prop 47 and see how it failed, okay, and it promised all these programs and stuff, that it didn't come through, uh, uh, that nobody would vote for Prop 57, which made certain violent crimes into non-violent crimes. And I'll ask you, if someone uh, spiked uh, one of your aunties, your cousins, your sister, your daughter, spiked their drink and took them home and sexually assaulted them, uh, do you believe that's a violent crime? Oh, absolutely. Guess what? Under Prop 57, it's not a violent, a violent crime. If someone walks into a room with an AK-47 and shoots everybody, shoots at everybody in the room, but doesn't hit one person, do you think that's a violent crime? Of course you do. Under the new, the new law, it's considered, it's still a felony, but it's considered nonviolent, which provides levers to once again, boom, cut sentences, cut time, and let these individuals out for this whole agenda of we shouldn't have prisons, prisons shouldn't exist. And uh, it, it's really disheartening what we're seeing right now. And then uh, uh, what we're seeing now, then after the George Floyd incident, it gave it gave those folks a little more juice to really come after us and and throw the blanket title of systemic racism onto everything that we do. And right now the criminals have the upper hand. And once again, I agree with you. I'm in tune with you. What I saw in Minneapolis was 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 horrific and wrong. And, and, and no, uh, there's I can't find the strongest of terms to use against what I saw with some of these cases. I'm with you, but you can't put us all in the same basket. You can't. Uh, and, and once again, we also have to respect due process, uh, you know, of law uh, when officers do. Uh, 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 get involved in some of these things there's a process and we just have to trust the process to a degree yeah well yeah and and exactly that the people investigating it mm -hmm. they are professional enough that even if it's one of their colleagues they're going to do it right they're going to mm -hmm. because they have to it's right. their reputation is now on the line and, yeah. and for them yeah for them, it's not to say that it's not yeah. to say that there hasn't been, you know, you know well, sure, there, there always is. And it, that's, it, we've been talking about that, you know, this whole conversation is that there's always going to be bad cops and yeah. eventually they will expose themselves because they have to, just like every other profession. Eventually, like you, you know, you were talking about doctors earlier and prior to doing what I'm doing now as a, I was a pharmaceutical rep. And so I called on all these doctors and a lot of them practiced for years years and years and then eventually something really screwed up happened and they mm -hmm. exposed themselves for what they actually were mm -hmm. now how often does that happen it's rare but yeah. when it happens especially if they're performing surgery or something and, and they're unqualified or they made a major mistake or you know sometimes it's just that was the last surgery of the day they've they've been performing surgeries for 12 15 hours they've been on their feet and they're just exhausted, mm -hmm. but they have another mm -hmm. surgery that's been scheduled and they have to do it. And yeah. unfortunately, that's sometimes when when accidents happen and all of a sudden, uh, yeah, this guy's got a lawsuit on his hands because he screwed up. Well, sometimes yeah, that's it's... that's the way law enforcement happens, too. And, you know, some guys, they're good cops, but they actually had a really bad day and yep. something snapped. And, you know, who knows? But you guys have seen that. I mean, obviously, you've seen that a lot more than I have, but. Right. It's just one right. of those where as, as an outsider, I'm sitting back here watching a lot. I, I don't know how many, uh, you know, thousands of police officers I've met around the world, but every single one of them that I've met has been a decent person right. and not just a cop. I haven't actually seen them be a cop, but from what I've met from them, they're, they're good people. They have families, they have desires and things that they want to do in life, just like everybody else does. And they've decided as a career that they're going to be in law enforcement and right. to, to be vilified automatically just for putting on a badge to me is the worst of the worst. Oh, oh absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and I, just like I was saying, like, look at the numbers, compare the numbers. Like you were just talking about doctors and some of them is not accidents. Some of them is just done maliciously. Like there are some dentists who uh, diddle their patients while they're sleeping under, under anesthesia. Of course, most dentists, do, but look at it, 250,000 deaths 
from the medical field for malpractice, accidents, and misdiagnosis. 1,000 deaths out of 700,000 police officers policing 320 million people. And we're the ones you're coming after. We're it. But, I, but you know, I get it. A lot of it is media driven. A lot of it is agenda driven. And uh, every movement needs a villain. And uh, we're it. Uh, and I'm hoping that this dissipates at some point, but I don't think it will. Uh, and I think we're going to see some uh, a few bad years uh, coming um, like I've never seen before. And the, once again, I, mean, you know, I agree, the people that are going to pay are the citizens we serve. It's not going to get better. Yeah, unfortunately, I think the pendulum has swung far enough that the policies are, are, are catching up and uh, the people that are going to suffer until the suffering gets so bad that the politicians start pulling that pendulum the other way. Uh, right. It's going to get ugly. And, and it really bothers me that most of the people setting these policies aren't affected by the policies. No, they're not. Not at all. Not at all. I've seen, literally seen politicians literally right in front of us, right in front of a mob of a crowd, throw us completely under the bus, uh, you know, and uh, not one during the riots. We had seven months of riots and not one politician came forward and said, hey, that wasn't our cops. <laughs> We don't work. They don't work Minnesota. Uh, we, there's no videos of our officers putting a knee in somebody's neck. Uh, what about the officer that beat the other guy on the east side? Well, that guy got arrested. The, our, our department investigated that. We brought it to light and we act, and sent, it, sent that officer through the process and he was indicted. Uh, but that's not our cops. And I was really hoping one politician would say that. But instead, once again, it's about career survival not uh not, not keeping people safe anymore and until that changes uh because i usually expect the pendulum to swing i mean there's always been this never-ending uh battle between crime control and due process and for 10 years you'll have the crime control folks winning and to me if either side gets too much power it's dangerous you know whether it's crime control or due process but sometimes it swings to due process and then due process right now what i'm seeing is due process completely having a stranglehold on it uh, the extreme forms of due process, because I agree with due process, having a stranglehold on it, and we will not be able to get this pendulum to swing back in time to fix it. And then when we do try to fix it, it'll be just futile. We will be complete, completely impotent because what are you, well, just what you talked about. Officers are retiring, officers are quitting, and then you demonize or engage in demagoguery against officers so bad, now you got nobody wants to even be a cop. I, I, I talk to activists all the time, and so one of their number one complaints is, why don't you guys hire more Blacks? I said, well, if you guys stop scaring them, they might join. <laughs> you know, like I'm an African-American, proud African-American. I, I, I love my people with all my heart. But I caught a lot of flack when I first decided to join the police department. And uh, even before, like I almost said no. Uh, but I, thankfully, I, I joined. And I always tell uh, my friends and family from the African-American community, uh, there's no difference between you and me. The only difference between you and me is I saw the other side. That's it. You know, I'm not defending anything. I'm not defending anyone or one side or the other. I just understand human nature and why some shootings happen. I understand why those things happen because I've been in that position before or been close to it. And, uh, you know, I, I, once again, I just don't have a big enough platform like many officers to really say that out loud uh, in a public hearing, uh, you know, in a public setting. And, uh, but once again, by the time that op window does open up again, and it will, I think it'll be too late. I think it'll be too late and uh, we're going to regret it as a society. We will. Hmm. Well, I think in, in many areas, especially like what you're talking about, they're already regretting it. And oh, yeah. clearly if it's only been, I don't know what a number of, I, I think George Floyd was killed a little over a year ago. And yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. And so, you, no, if, no, that was May, May. It was uh, May 25th, uh, May 25th. Uh, I think of it was 2020? Memorial. 2020. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it's been less than a year. And in yeah. that, in that period of time, you've gone from, you know, these massive amounts of rioting, defunding, and already the spike in the crime and from the spike and the spike in the crime isn't just from defunding. It's also from this lack or the tying you guys' hands and yeah. the, the policies that come down to basically say, yeah, it doesn't matter. You know, you, other than actually killing somebody, you're going to be, you might get arrested but you'll be out on bail within a day. And then mm -hmm. that's that whole spike has happened. And then we're already back to, oh crap, we need to allocate more, more resources for the police and hire more mm -hmm. police in order to make our streets safe. Yeah, and that's happened right. in eight months. 
you're right. And prior to the uh, uh, George Floyd incident, the unfortunate incident, uh, you know, we had we were seeing a rise in crime based on changes in laws. Uh, there was a proposition called uh, AB 109 that was put out there. Uh, we didn't even get to vote on it. And this is what happened. Uh, it, it basically took parole, put them on the backs of the probation departments across the uh, state. Uh, a probation department that was already overwhelmed. They couldn't even keep track of the probationers they had. Now they had these parolees and they gave them these little flimsy uh, uh, ankle bracelets and then they cut them off. And next thing you know, they were running around the streets again. So we started to see an uptick then. Uh, then they took away the supervision uh, aspect of it and said, okay, you don't have to check in with me. You could check in at a kiosk. A kiosk can't tell if you have four kilos of cocaine in your pants. You know, they, they, a, key, a kiosk can't tell if you just stabbed somebody on the way to the dang kiosk and you swipe your car. Oh, you checked in. That's how flimsy it became. Then comes 2014 where voters, and I don't blame voters because if I wasn't a police officer and I saw the title, the Safe Neighborhoods and School Act, I'd probably vote for it. And here's why, because a lot of people don't read between the lines. They just say, hey, we like safe neighborhoods and schools. But if you read between the lines, you would see nothing about the proposition was about public safety. It was about finding an excuse to release thousands of criminal, criminals, which there's these groups out there that want that. They literally don't believe anybody should be in prison at all. And that's who's behind this. So they voted for it. And guess what we saw? A rise in property crime and a little bit of a rise in violent crime. But then comes this evil step cousin, uh, Prop 57. I figured after voting for Prop 47 and see how it failed, okay, and it promised all these programs and stuff, that it didn't come through, uh, uh, that nobody would vote for Prop 57, which made certain violent crimes into nonviolent crimes. And I'll ask you, if someone uh, spiked uh, one of your aunties, your cousins, your sister, your daughter, spiked their drink and took them home and sexually assaulted them, uh, do you believe that's a violent crime? Oh, absolutely. Guess what? Under Prop 57, it's not a, viol a violent crime. If someone walks into a room with an AK-47 and shoots everybody, shoots at everybody in the room, but doesn't hit one person, do you think that's a violent crime? Of course you do. Under the new, the new law, it's considered, it's still a felony, but it's considered nonviolent, which provides levers to once again, boom, cut sentences, cut time, and let these individuals out for this whole agenda of we shouldn't have prisons, prisons shouldn't exist. And uh, it, it's really disheartening what we're seeing right now. And then uh uh, what we're seeing now, then after the George Floyd incident, it gave it gave those folks a little more juice to really come after us and and throw the blanket title of systemic racism onto everything that we do. And right now, the criminals have the upper hand, and uh, you know it, it's really heartbreaking to see. It's really heartbreaking to see. Yeah, it is, especially because the more they understand that there's no repercussions of doing any anything they want. You know, there's a reason that that with the last stat that I saw, I think it was Minneapolis again. It's it's seen like a 700 percent increase in carjackings or something. I don't know it's some phenomenon. Maybe it's not 700 percent, but it's some just phenomenal number of carjackings. Mm -hmm. And if you mm -hmm. don't think a carjacking is going to ruin your whole day, it, well, it's it's going to, especially if somebody actually gets hurt. You know, the, yeah. there's kids left in the back seat when the carjacking happens. There's all sorts of major oh, yeah. issues that can happen to that. But if there's no repercussion, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah, they yeah. stole the car, you know, big deal. The message you're sending to the criminal element is nothing's going to happen to you. And now when you have district attorneys being placed, a district attorney's job is to be an advocate for victims. Uh, currently, uh, you know, in, in many parts of California, you have these new uh, district attorneys who are literally they might as well be probation, uh, not probation, uh, uh, public defenders in a suit. You know, they care more about the criminal uh, than the victim of the crime. Like, this is not an exaggeration. I wish I was exaggerating, but literally we have these district attorneys now who don't care about victims of crime. And they're, it's, I don't, I don't know what's happening. I don't know if they're, <laughs> they're being bought or I don't know if they really believe in what they're selling. But it's, it's, it's uh, an abomination what we're seeing. Uh, we need balance, okay? The public defender's job is to, and I, and I respect that job. If I was in trouble, I'd, I'd want a good defense attorney. You know, that's their job. The district attorney's job is to protect and fight for the victims of crime. We don't have that anymore in Los Angeles County. They don't have that anymore in San Francisco and other places. And, and we're seeing state by state, city by city, uh, these 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 types of DAs being promoted, funded, and they're getting seats and they're getting in to uh, our disbelief. We think people have 
there's no way there's no people way people are gonna vote for this person and they end up doing it but we can't rest on our lower laurels you know and i encourage police officers to to start speaking out i encourage victims of crimes to start becoming more vocal because what they really want is our silence they want everybody to be bullied so bad that they're afraid to say anything i can't do that i have a beautiful wife i don't want her to be harmed i have three beautiful children I want them to have safe, clean streets as a father and as a man. Uh, you know, I still believe that criminals should be held accountable. And uh, and for me, it's not about punishment per se. People think, oh, when you put people in jail, you're just trying to punish them for being human. No, it's about giving communities relief from the activities of individuals who refuse, refuse to change their behavior. That's what I think when I put a drug dealer away for three years, that's three years that that drug dealer can't sell drugs near a drug program. When I put away a child rapist, that's seven, eight, 10 years that a child rapist can't touch another child. We need to get back to that. Uh, it's about protecting the community, not hurting people. Yeah. Well, I've, I've kept you for uh, uh, quite a while here and it's been such a fascinating uh, discussion here. And I, I really appreciate you coming on. And like I said, my entire purpose is to give guys like you a good platform where you can talk about what's really happening in there, it, it, down mm -hmm. in the streets and down uh, in, in <clears throat> you know, the basics of society is, is where you guys operate. And it's yeah. not up in the, uh, you know, the lofty halls of City Hall. So uh, right. you've, right. you've got to tell the truth or, or else um, uh, it, it'll, it'll never be, we'll never be able to actually have good change and, and yeah, change yeah. positive until we actually acknowledge what's actually happening. Yeah. I remember my dad telling me once that uh, the truth is like a horrible sword that cuts you <laughs> and leaves you open. And nobody wants to get cut and left open, but when you heal, you're stronger for it. Lies are delicious. Lies are band-aids over a gaping wound and uh, it just gets infected and becomes uh, infested. And uh, we have to get back to telling the truth. Take the politics out of police work, public safety, get politics, whether it's left or right. Because in my mind, the extremes of both uh, extreme ideologies, extremes of conservatism, extremes of progressivism are the reason why we are in the uh, state we are in. So I just thank you so much for allowing me to uh, be on your program today. If you guys want to follow me, I'm on uh, Twitter at Officer Dion Joseph, OFCR Dion Joseph. Yeah, you can follow me on Facebook. Also, www.deonjoseph.org. Uh, that's my website. If you'd like me to come speak to your college campus or your law enforcement and just share about community policing, the realities of policing and homelessness, I, I want to continue to get the truth out there. And uh, uh, and I, I look forward to sharing with anybody willing to listen. That is fantastic, Dion. And I, I'll tell you, we actually started a, a hashtag. It's called PosiPoll. And mm -hmm. it's all about, uh, if, like you said, the 700,000 officers out there, they are all doing great things every single day. And right. uh, hashtag PosiPoll stands for positive police pictures. And my thought is, you know, if everybody that's out there that's wearing a uniform would just take one picture of what they were doing that day. You know, they stop at the side of the road and help somebody change a tire or they help a homeless person uh, get help, you know, something like that. And I know most of you guys, well, 99.99% of all law enforcement, that's the last thing that's on their minds. <laughs> exactly. But, we don't like that. <laughs> yeah, but no, you know, <laughs> it's and, needed and, right now. <laughs> being in the spotlight, but you're right. And, but in order to, in order to battle the narrative that is out there, that you guys are the problem, that you know the scapegoating. I think the the, the only way to do it is for you guys to stand up and actually uh, fight for yourselves. Because Dion Joseph and Jared Bradley can't do it alone. We no, we, we need we need help, and there's a massive army of police officers out there. Just take a picture. You know, you're getting some lady's cat out of the tree. Take a picture of it, you know, with the smiling lady with the cat. You know, I mean, that's a, a, a weird, you know, 1950s example. But um, but the bottom line is, if if everybody put a hashtag posi poll on a, I, I don't know if you know who um, Cheryl McCollum is. She's out of Atlanta, uh, just a phenomenal crime scene investigator. She that she helped me. Familiar. She helped me come up with. Um, she helped me come up with the idea and. To me, it's awesome. I mean, imagine if social media was being flooded with these pictures every day. You know what? I'm going to agree with you, and here's why. The other side is doing so much hard work in showing the negative. 
so I think there is time for us to stand up for our profession. And uh, I will participate in that. And uh, I will talk to some of my fellow officers, hope they can, uh, and hope they decide to do that. And you're right. A lot of officers, we don't, including me, we don't do what we do for likes or pats on the back. But in this environment where there's a narrative uh, that we're all monsters, we do have to be proactive and say, no, tell our story. This is who we are. So I have one picture I just got yesterday from a friend of mine. So I'll tell you what, Posy Paul, I'll hashtag that on Twitter and uh, spell it again. P-O-S what? <laughs> P-O-S-I-P-O-L. Uh-huh. It's kind of like okay. a, a playoff of Interpol. So, I got you. Okay. Posse, you will, you will see that hashtag today. You will see that today. Oh, that's fantastic, man. Okay. <laughs> and you know what? Any of your uh, fellow officers, if they ever want to come on the program, I'd love to have them. Outstanding. Okay. That's beautiful, man. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Oh, the pleasure is all mine. Okay. We'll see you on uh, LinkedIn and Facebook and stuff. All right. God bless. Be safe.